Okay, what's the scenario with water in the world? That's a big question. Let's start with the oceans. That's where most of the water in the world is. The oceans are in a mess because there's a lot of plastics floating in, there's nitrate coming in, sea level is rising, consequently due to climate change and to icebergs melting as we all know. The oceans are in bad shape. Come to the rivers. Most rivers in India do not reach the sea at all, except for a few days during the monsoon. The Kaveri, for example, is a closed basin. It doesn't reach the sea for seven to 10 years sometimes. Rivers are dying. There's no flow in the rivers. Dams have interrupted flows. Pollution is entering uh, the river. Sand mining is killing rivers. Groundwater is depleting dramatically. India is a groundwater civilization, 33 million bore wells, 250 cubic kilometers of groundwater every year. And all over India, groundwater tables are falling and farmers are finding it more and more difficult to access groundwater. So we are in big trouble insofar as water is concerned. So urbanization is a phenomenon. We've reached the tipping point globally. More than 50% of people are now in cities. And urbanization as a process itself tends to distance people from what we call nature, both the biotic as well as the abiotic component of nature. That's a reality that's gripping us. However, nature does have an important role for urban areas, primarily because the source of water for urban areas are usually rivers where dams are put and water is pumped into the cities to provide water. It's this catchment forest which makes the rivers flow. And the big challenge before us globally is how do you get the urban population who consume the water to realize the importance of preserving and protecting the forest catchments so that the rivers continue to flow with pristine water. And because the distance between the city and nature is constantly increasing and the source of water is also increasing tremendously, the disconnect seems to be also increasing very fast. So we have to flip it around. It's with wastewater. Uh, most wastewater, unfortunately, in India is not treated, but nature does a whole bunch of treatment. And you'd be amazed that uh, the waters of the rivers, say, which originate from Bangalore, by the time you go about 80 kilometers away, are reasonably clean. Nature has provided the service of oxygenating it, allowing bacteria to chomp on the carbon matter, and even to disintegrate a lot of chemicals. So two ways nature is serving urban areas. One, providing the fresh water that cities need. Two, dealing with the wastewater flows which come from cities and cleaning it up. But both are under tremendous stress. What do we do with it? I think cities will have to respond to lakes and wetlands within them, protect and preserve nature. This is the immediate point of contact which neighborhoods will have with what is nature. If we are able to protect these lakes and make sure that they're not sort of dumped with waste or polluted with sewage and that their boundaries are fenced and their interconnectivity is protected and preserved, then it gives you a feel of what nature means to a city. And these wetlands within cities are actually remediating water, wastewater, cleaning up wastewater, recharging the groundwater which comes back to us as drinking water, treating wastewater from sewage treatment plants, all those possibilities exist, including providing livelihoods as for fishermen, as for cattle rearers, and so on. So I think lakes and wetlands will start to become the first point of contact between citizens and nature. And they should be treated also as literacy places, eco-literacy or water literacy, whereby at least the students learn the importance of this part of geography which helps cities. New York is the one striking example where uh, the city forefathers seem to have realized this link long back, maybe even a hundred years back and started to work on it. The second example would be Stockholm and Amsterdam, who have focused on their internal water bodies and have cleaned up their lakes. Uh, you can swim in the lakes of Stockholm and they're also the source of drinking water for the city. In Amsterdam, the canals have been cleaned up. They were festering pools of uh, sewage not so far back, just about 40, 50 years back. But they've cleaned it up now and therefore they are recreational spaces. So water has a direct role of consumption, but water also has an important role of, of recreation, environmental modification and aesthetics. Amsterdam has achieved that. London has cleaned up the Thames, and that's a striking example. And finally, Singapore has done a very good job of managing the whole island as, an, as a catchment and therefore stores all the rainwater there in about 24 to 28 different lakes 
which become sources of water for itself. So I think those relationships are uh, being realized by a few cities. Here's the key. The 20th century problems for cities was of one of engineering to get water from far sources to itself. The 21st century problems are of, envi of the environment and ecology. Now you have to worry about protecting the rivers, protecting the forests so that the rivers flow. It's not about supply anymore. It's about management. Unfortunately, in India, in India, we don't have a river basin institution for any of our rivers. Till we are able to get an institution which monitors the entire catchment, the source of the river to the point it joins the sea and gets a deep understanding of what is affecting the flows and therefore persuades other departments of the government, citizenry, to be able to act to mitigate those negative impacts, we will be in a problem. And therefore, a river-based institutional framework is crucial to get nature and the city to talk vis-a-vis -vis water. One of them is the kind of chemicals and soaps and detergents that we use in our homes. Remember, whatever we use is flushed down the drain and ultimately it reaches a river or a lake. The more eco-friendly we get with the, these products, soaps, detergents, the less we use them, the, uh, the better. Uh, the other is our food habits. So the food that we eat is crucial to what we do with water and our rivers. The more of a dry land, millet-based, local produce-based diet that we shift to, the better it is for water. The less sugar we consume, the better it is for water and rivers. So give up on sugar, get a healthy lifestyle, eat local, eat millets, grow some plants, grow some wild weeds too, and put a bowl of water out for the birds.